In this tutorial, you're going to get to practice some common array methods with some practical JavaScript exercises. Hi, this is James from Junior Developer Central and welcome to this tutorial where we're going to be focusing on array methods with some example practical exercises. If you have a second before we start, don't forget to subscribe to support the channel and so you don't miss out on any future tutorials. So I've provided a link to this gist in the description below and the first step to completing the exercises is just to get a copy of this array onto your clipboard and then you can just head straight on over to your developer tools and paste that array into there so that you have it available so you can start working with the array and its methods. And the second part is there are also some exercises at the bottom of the gist as well. And there are five in total and you can either go ahead and try and complete all of those in one go and then come back and review your answers with the rest of the video. Or also you can skip different parts of the video so that you can get to the sections if you do get stuck on any particular exercise. So I'm just going to go through each exercise in turn so if you want to follow along just let the video continue and I'll go through a possible solution for each exercise. So you might have seen on the array that the people that are inside it have certain information like their name, their date of birth, their department and also their salary and the first exercise is actually asking us to find out what the average income is for all people in the array. So just to get a simple average we can add up all of the salaries that are inside the array and then divide it by the number of people. So anytime you need to make a sum or to bring some values together you can think of using the reduce function. And the reduce function takes a function as the first argument, which itself has multiple arguments that you can use, the first being something called an accumulator, and the second is the actual item in the array that we're looking at. So with the reduce function we can reduce an array down into a single value, and that gets stored in the accumulator, and for every item that we loop through the accumulator can be modified. So the logic is that we're going to add each salary from each person in the array to the accumulator. But as you can see the result that we get back isn't quite what we're after. And the reason for this is the salary property is actually a string, so we need to make sure that we're actually parsing it as an integer, otherwise JavaScript will try and do string concatenation. And the other thing is we need to give the accumulator an initial value, otherwise we're likely to get null or undefined as the initial value and trying to add numbers on top of that still gives us an incorrect output. So now we're actually getting an integer value back which is actually the combined value of all the salaries that are inside the people array. So with that in mind all we need to do to get the average is to divide it by the number of people in the array. Which gives us a rough value of 39916 for the average salary for the people in the array and of course we could do some additional number formatting to round that value up or down. So that's pretty much it for exercise one, let's have a look at exercise two which is to find out who are the people in the array that are currently older than 30. So any time when we want to remove values from an array, for example we want to get rid of everyone that's under the age of 30, we can use the filter function. So inside the filter function we need to return a true or false value, which will remove the person from the array if the value is false, or keep them in there if it's true. So the first thing we need to do is to work out what the current date is. And for this example I'm just going to get the full year of the current date, and then subtract the year that the person was born, and just see if the resulting value is larger than 30. So you can see here we've got a list of 9 people in the array that have an age that is larger than 30, but don't forget we're only looking at the actual full year of their date of birth, which isn't quite accurate because people might be older if their birthday is already gone. So the data we've got might not be completely accurate, but this quick solution just shows you how to use the filter function, and when you can solve this exercise on your own you might come up with your own solution that looks at the data object in a little bit more detail to work out if their birthday has passed for this current year. So that's a quick solution for exercise 2, let's have a look at exercise 3 which is basically to get a list of the person's full name which is consisting of their first name and last name. So anytime you need to change the values that are stored inside an array you can use the map function. And the simplest way is just to return a string or a template literal that contains the person's first and last name. Another thing you can do is use destructuring in the function call 
to save having to reference the person variable each time. So there are a couple of options there. Alternatively, you might want to actually include the rest of the person object as well with the map function that you return and just add the full name as an additional property to each of the people in the array. So here we've just generated a new full name property and used the spread operator to return the whole person object and just add the full name as a new property. So I'm not sure if that was actually required to actually get the list of people's full names. Literally calling the map function and returning the template literal should be enough to solve this exercise. So let's have a look at exercise four, which is asking us to get a list of people in the array, but order them from the youngest to the oldest. So for this, we can call the sort function on the people array, which requires you to pass in another function that compares two of the adjacent elements in the array to determine which one should come first. So let's create new date objects for the person A and person B arguments. And in order to decide which person should come first, we can simply subtract one date from the other, which as you can see has ordered the elements in the array by ascending date of birth order. However, the exercise actually wanted us to get the youngest first, so let's just swap around person A and person B here. So now you can see Gabriella Stewart, who has the date of birth of 1994, is at the top of the array, with Charles Campbell having a date of birth of 1977 is at the bottom. So that completes exercise four. Let's have a look at the final exercise, exercise five, which is to get a list of all the people in each department. So what we need for this exercise is to return an object which has all of the departments listed as properties in the object and a count of how many people are actually in each department. So again, we can use the reduce function for this. And I'll initialize the accumulator as a blank object. So what we're going to do for each person in the array, we're actually going to return a new object that has the previous value of the accumulator spread back into it. And then we're going to create a computed property based on the person's department value, which we'll then add one to as the person will be in this department. So we can use a bit of clever JavaScript here. We can say, uh, use the accumulator object and access the department property that's stored on there. So this will be something like marketing or development and add one to its value. But if we actually run that code as it is, Oops, I forgot to call the accumulator accumulator here. And there is a typo in this one here. You'll see, although we do get the departments listed as properties in the new object, all of the values applied to it are actually not a number because the first time we try and add one to that particular property within the accumulator, there'll be no value there. So JavaScript won't let you add one to an undefined value. So all we need to do is say, if that property on the accumulator doesn't already exist, set the initial value to one. And we can do that with an or statement. So this will just ensure that when that new department property is set up on the accumulator and there's no value, it will get a default value. So now you can see we've got a list of all of the departments with the number of people that have their department property set to that particular value. So there you have some simple exercises to get you practicing your JavaScript method skills. Hopefully you found that good practice to get to grips with some of those basic functions. If you have different solutions to the ones I came up with, feel free to post them in the comments below. There's always more than one way to solve these sort of problems. And just before you go, don't forget to subscribe to support the channel and so you don't miss out on any future tutorials.